Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to this new video. This time I want to talk about application security and the tools that you can use to learn about application security and identify any possible vulnerabilities in the applications. Now, uh, this video is intended for those who are learning or expanding the knowledge on application security. If you are an experienced pen tester, this video is not for you. Or if you are a developer or a coder who is good into security of the code, this is not going to be for you because most likely you're going to be using these and any other tools to uh, make sure your work is secure. Now, let's talk about it. The first thing that I want to mention is OWASP. OWASP Foundation, as you can see right here, is a foundation that encourages projects or works towards application security. It's a non-for-profit, and the whole purpose of that is to make sure that there is a um, standard when it comes to application security. It's kind of a standard that they created, so many different people can align with it. Now, they do uh, support and create many different projects related to application security. One of the many projects they have is Zap. Uh, how, how did this tab get out of here? So Zap, as you could see here, is Z-Attack Proxy, and as the name implies, is a proxy or an application in this case that is going to sit between your web browser and the web application firewall and it's going to analyze the traffic that is going through and it's going to test against security best practices and it's going to show you the results of that. The other thing that I want to mention is that uh, Zap can be downloaded and installed on all major OS, Mac, Linux, and Windows. In this case, I'm going to be demonstrating this from a Kali Linux computer, and on most versions of Kali Linux, Zap is already installed. It was not in, it was not installed on mine, so I just did a simple app install Zap proxy. It downloaded it and installed it for me to run it once you have it installed. And the application is going to be the same on whatever operating system you're going to be running this from. It's just how you install it. It's going to be uh, a little bit different. So I'm going to run it for the first time. As you could see at the, at the time of this video, the current version is 2.15.0. And in this case, it's loading all the uh, modules and engines to um, make sure the application is running in the background. So let's wait for this to finish. And when you run it for the first time, or it's going to ask you whether you want to run the application uh, if you want persist, persist the Zap session. What it means is if you select that you would like to do that, uh, all the work that you're going to do is going to be saved to the database that is running in the background, so you could use it as a reference. If you decide not to do it, when you close this session, whatever work you did, whatever scan you did, they're going to disappear. They're not going to be saved for the next time you run it. So in my case, I'm going to say no, but again, you could say yes if we're going to be uh, using that for references or for reporting in the future. So I'm going to click on start. And I'm here. So the main menu, it's super simple. Make sure that you see uh, what we're doing here. It's going to make more sense once we run the first scan. As you could see, we're going to have the option right here to run an automated scan, and most likely that's going to be what you're going to be doing. Or you could do it manually if, you know, we can maybe do some of those videos later in the future. But we're going to be using this. Here you have your menu bar. And something to keep in mind in the menu bar is that you're going to have many different tools that you could use as a standalone tool for a specific purposes, but many of these tools, if not all of them, are part of the automated scan. But if you're for looking for something specific, you can come right here and do it. All the results are going to be shown on this section, and you're going to see that it's going to display all the section in a tree-like structure, folder structure. And right in here, you're going to see all the pages that are being um, 
crawled and the result and as you could see you you gotta like train your eyes to pay attention to any uh, uh, critical alerts that are gonna be detected uh, they're gonna you're gonna have a number of like one two three as many as of those alerts are detected as you could see those are high priorities and you could have medium low and just informational and you're gonna see the type of um, crawlers that you're using and it, it's useful information the other thing that I would say just make sure that you come here one of these buttons I forgot which one it is is to check for updates now I downloaded this and installed this today so I'm current the most up-to-date version but if this is something that you have been used in a couple of months or if it was installed on your computer you may want to do the updates so I'm gonna come over and run my first scan and I'm gonna run my first scan against let me uh, move this out of the way I'm gonna run it against uh, I remove this let me put this back the uh, uh, damn vulnerable web application as you know if you're into cybersecurity as you could know this is one of the uh, many many um, vulnerable web application that you can use for testing purposes but uh, you could obviously run this against any applications but for testing purposes I'm gonna run it against um, that application so I'm gonna type the URL 192 168 170 22 make sure that you type the all the um, the whole URL that you want to test against and you have the option of selecting the spiders that you would like to use for you know to use spiders to list or crawl or all the pages on the site for this video and most of the time to be honest with you I leave it as the default and I'm gonna do that for this video so I'm gonna click on attack what I need to oh I forgot to type the protocol so in the protocol you have the option of doing HTTP or HTTPS if you in this case again this is a vulnerable URL a vulnerable web application using HTTP but if you have a site that is running over HTTPS you could type that in here if you have the site that is running on port 80 and is redirecting port 80 to 443 you can do it as HTTP and you're gonna have the HTTP scan then it's gonna be redirected to the HTTPS but that scan is gonna take longer so if you know for a fact that you're gonna be testing on HTTPS just type it in here Otherwise, it's going to take longer because of the redirect. In this case, I'm just using HTTP. I'm going to click on Attacked. And as you could see here, we have the information view that everything that, everything that is taking place at this moment, and you'll see all the, uh, the methods that are being used, guest and post, right? And it's going to go through a series of testing and analyzing the application. As you could see, it already found some... Um, medium I'm gonna I'm not gonna call this vulnerabilities priority alerts that you have to pay attention to and as of now nothing high and as you could see right here let me uh, come to this section sites and it's listing the site in a tree light structure and is analyzing as you could see right here so I'm gonna pause the video until it's done and I'll come back to this okay so the uh, scan has finished and as you could see here all the findings are saved for uh, for you to review in this section but something to keep in mind and something that sh you should concentrate on is like when you come to the alert section in here when you do that's going to show you what it found and it's going to give you some suggestions in this case for instance it's listed the uh, the uh, CSP header is not set. If you expand this content security setter, content security header, um, so you're gonna see that this is classified as medium, and it's gonna give you an explanation of why you would like to enable that and how that could potentially be exploded. And the same thing is gonna be with the other directory browsing, as you could see right here. 
and it's going to point to the um, always best practices depending on the one that you are clicking on. So uh, look, it's pretty cool. It's going to show you the information right here. Now, again, this is Zap. This is just an introduction video for you to look into it and have an idea of how to detect web application vulnerabilities. This is just the beginning. I'm going to create a series of these videos to hopefully uh, you know, teach and, and provide information to those that would like to learn more about it. I hope this information was useful to you. If you think it was, all I ask you for you is to click on the like button, subscribe to the channel, and consider leaving a nice, you know, like comment down in the comment section. Or if you have a question, you could leave it down there. I don't promise that I will answer all the questions, but I try to answer the questions as soon as I can. Thank you for watching, and I will talk to you on the next video.